Hi everyone, I'm a particle detector scientist at Oxford University. Particle detectors are one of the most important tools we need to study particle physics. There are many different types. One of the first to be invented was the cloud chamber. This was invented by Scottish physicist C.T.R. Wilson in 1911. He wasn't actually trying to build a particle detector, he wanted to study clouds. The story is he spent time working at a weather station at the top of Ben Nevis, watching the clouds form. He then wanted to reproduce the conditions in his lab in Cambridge where a vapour is just at the point of condensing from a gas to a liquid. In his cloud chamber the vapour is alcohol, not water. The plate at the bottom is sitting on dry ice to keep it very cold and the vapour falls down and falls a super saturated layer at the bottom where it doesn't take much to trigger it to condense into droplets. When a particle passes through it ionises the air as it kicks the electrons off the atoms in its path and this creates a line of droplets in the chamber that along the track of the particle. This way Wilson found he'd invented an instrument which could investigate radioactivity, which was an exciting new phenomenon a hundred years ago. It could see particles from natural radioactivity in the ground as well as cosmic rays from outer space. The cloud chamber looks very pretty, but it can be a fiddle to operate, so it's now been replaced with new technology. The new version is the silicon pixel detector. This lets us see the tracks of charged particles that are hitting a silicon chip, and by looking at the pattern that they leave, we can see what type of particle it is. This is a piece of uranium glass. The uranium inside gives it the green colour and the radioactive, when the radioactive isotopes decay, they produce beta particles. The betas leave a squiggly line inside our detector. As I'm now stuck at, the, at home due to the coronavirus, I don't have access to the radioactive sources that we keep in a safe in the physics department. But I have got another radioactive source here in my kitchen. This is a smoke detector. It contains a americium source as the smoke detector works by ionising the air and then measuring the flow of the electric current. It produces alpha particles but they can't get out of this metal case but also gammas which can. And if we hold the smoke detector right by the particle detector then we can see the gammas which just leave tiny dots as they hit a single pixel. Other particles leave other patterns. Alphas leave a big splodge Muons give a straight line as they just go straight through the silicon. I don't see many muons in my kitchen, but last time I took a flight, I took the detector in my hand baggage and I tested it at 11,000 metres and saw lots of muons. Radiation levels are higher above the clouds due to the cosmic rays that bombard the Earth from outer space. By looking at the tracks left by particles, we can identify what they are. We use the same technology in the Atlas detector at the Large Hadron Collider. It has a huge number of silicon wafers laid out in cylindrical layers around the beam pipe. The total surface area is bigger than a football pitch. And we need this to keep track of every particle flying out. There are sometimes hundreds of tracks recorded at the same time. By looking at patterns recorded in the detector, we can identify what type of particle made them and we can search for the signature as something exotic like the Higgs boson or maybe something completely new.